welcome back to Old Grey Books. I'm Ellie, this is Percy, <laughs> and today we're here to do my uh, mid-month book haul. Um, I wasn't sure whether I'd be doing a mid-month book haul this month. Um, I haven't been buying books. Um, the only ones that I have been buying have been art books uh, for my uni course. <laughs> Um, so they're probably not going to arrive for like another two months um, with the way that everything is at the moment, um, but that's fine. We can deal with that. Here's a little smiley face. Um, but I have ordered a lot of books um, in April, at the end of April, so they're just like slowly trickling in, but not so slowly. Um, I literally had like a bunch arrive the day after I filmed my April book haul. I was like, oh, I could have stuck these all in there. <laughs> but um, yeah, we have quite a few. We have a, a few different piles and uh, we'll go through them as best as I can with Percy sitting on my lap and wanting cuddles. Um, okay. Let's start with these. Um, one of these did technically arrive in April, um, but they're part of a series, so I wanted to show them together. Um, and that is books two and three in the Stella Montgomery Intrigue series um, by Judith Russell. So um, book two is Wormwood Meyer, and book three is Wake Stone Hall. Um, book three arrived last month, so. Uh, that's why I wanted to show them together because it kind of didn't make any sense to me to show book three when I hadn't had book two arrive yet. Um, this is a really cute middle grade series and I will hopefully be picking these both up um, very shortly because I have been waiting for them. Um, I read book one last year and I really loved it and I hadn't bought these ones. Um, but then I saw that these beautiful hardcovers were being replaced with paperbacks that aren't quite as nice. Um, so I wanted to grab these before they were no longer available. My best friend Angel got a couple of books um, ordered uh, for me from her work. Um, a couple of new releases that I couldn't find anywhere else. Um, so I have Peter Lara's uh, Reading Normal by Anna Waitley. I have Please Don't Hug Me by Kay Kerr. These are both Love Oz YA. Um, this has to do with autism. Actually, I think they both do. Um, this one just mentions that her mind works differently, so um, maybe it's just neurodiversity. Either way, these are both our uh, own voices. Super excited about them. And then the other one I got from Angel was Girls with Razor Hearts by Suzanne Young. This is the sequel to Girls with Sharp Sticks, which um, ironically was a present last year from Angel. So um, I got her to grab this one for me and um, I couldn't find it anywhere. So her bookstore was able to get it in, which is great. So, um, that was lovely. Um, next up we have my well-read pick for this month. Um, this month I also, um, they do add-ons and I decided to get two add-ons because these are books that I wanted and they were a little bit cheaper with them than they have been anywhere else and also, you know, they're a small, um, in independently owned company and they're Australian so why not uh, support them? So um, I got Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Erivasto. Um, obviously this won the Booker Prize last year and is up for the Women's Prize um, this year and I'm really excited for that. Um, I've been reading through that list so I will be getting to this one um, very very shortly. <laughs> He's still sitting down here. The other add-on I got was The Adversary by Ronnie Scott. Um, I've been told this is kind of like the male version of a book out called Cherry Beach, which is another Australian book. I haven't read that one, 
but um, I thought that I would give this one a go and I probably am going to pick up Cherry Beach um, back when I'm buying books again because I've heard really great things about it lately. But this one I didn't notice until now but it has got some incredible reviews. Uh, it's got Brian Washington who wrote Lot, which is one of my favourite books of last year has Benjamin Law and it also has Emily Bitto who wrote The Strays which again is one of my favourite books um, and yeah this is like a coming of age people exploring their sexuality and things like that so I'm looking forward to it bye <laughs> um, and then the actual uh, pick for well read this month was Writers and Lovers by Lily King um, and as I've mentioned before every time you get a little slip with uh, 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 kind of like a letter from um, Biz and Laura who tell you why they picked the book and then some reading questions uh, on the back I'm so excited about this one I just I feel like Well Read has Sorry about that track. I feel like Well Read has just kind of like knocked it out of the park for me over the last couple of books. I haven't read any of them, but I've been really excited to read all of them. So um, I, I do want to pick this one up shortly. I say that with every book though, so who knows? I also had uh, two books that I had ordered from Better World Books um, back in either the very end of February or the very start of March. They took a while, but they're here. That's all that matters. Um, so I have A Man Lay Dead by Negeo Marsh. Um, this is a mystery novel, uh, kind of like a Christie. I'm trying to branch out and read things that aren't Agatha Christie, um, just because I know that eventually I'm, I'm not going to have any Agatha Christie books left. So um, I've heard good things about this one and uh, she's also an author from New Zealand which is always nice and uh, yeah I can't remember I think I heard about this on someone's channel and then like the next day someone else posted a video about it and then I ordered it. And then I got myself a copy of The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. Um, this is one of my friend Sophie's favourite books and I thought that I would give it a chance. Um, years and years and years ago I was given a bunch of Kate Morton books by my grandma. Um, she gave them to like my mum and I and neither of us were like super interested in it. Um, it's definitely kind of more than more the genre that my mum would read. Um, but uh, yeah, at the time neither of us were really into it and uh, I feel like I, I am a little bit more now. This is kind of like a family saga. Um, it's three different generations I think. Um, 1913, 1975 and 2005 and I believe it is set in Australia and Cornwall. Um, the only two places I've ever lived. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm excited to give this one a chance. And then, um, I decided to buy one of those, um, blind date with a book, uh, things. I got it from a store on Etsy called Six Things, and I ordered three. Um, and I, you can pick a genres. I went for classic and historical. Um, yeah, okay, so these are kind of, I'm not super enthused about most of these, um, which is a little bit disappointing, but with a blind date with a book, it's not really their fault, because, you know, um, but I'm not, I'm not sure about them, but, <laughs> so we have a uh, White Gardenia by Belinda Alexandra. I actually tried to read this when I was way too young. I think maybe like 13. Um, the librarian at my high school 
recommended this and it was not appropriate for a 13 year old um, I'm pretty sure like in the first couple of pages maybe I just remember there being like a really oh at the time like explicit sex scene and I I think probably now it wouldn't shock me but as a 13 year old I was like what is this what is happening um so yeah because of that I'm a little bit apprehensive about it because I I don't know whether it was just because I was too young for it but I wasn't really enjoying it but we'll uh, give it another go and see <laughs> um so that one was marked as historical fine historical absolutely um this is Fortune's Rock by Anita Shrev. Shrev. This was marked as a classic and I don't really know that it is but um sure. Uh, this was published in 2000. Um, this one I probably am the most excited about from all of them. Uh, it's set in 1899. Um, it's sort of in Massachusetts, it, I think it mentions Boston and that this Fortune's Rocks is like a coastal town so I assume it's still in Massachusetts. It's about this essayist that goes to stay with his family, I assume they're like a rich upper class family um, and uh, he starts an affair with the daughter who I... It doesn't say how young she is, but I assume she's young-ish. And, um, there goes Percy again. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm kind of intrigued about this. It's a bit of a chunker. So, um, let's have a look. Yeah, it's like 450 words. So, I might end up using it as one of my big books. I don't know. It just looks... I guess because it's like a weird size, it just looks big. Um, and then last up, this one was also marked as a classic and yeah, it's not. <laughs> um, this is The Lost Bars of Alice Hart by Holly Ringland. Um, this literally came out in like 2018, so it's not really a classic. Um, I believe it is historical though. Um, this does have really good uh, reviews uh, on Goodreads. Um, I would never have picked this book up by myself, I won't lie. Um, um, back when I was still working at the bookstore, this book was everywhere, all of the time. Like, we had like so, so many copies of it, and I was just sick of seeing it. So when I opened it, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, this book is stalking me. Um, but yeah, then I, I read the reviews on Goodreads and um, it has really good reviews. So I'm excited to give this a go and see if I like it. So yes, those are the, the first half of my main books. Um, I'm not sure how big the second half is going to be. I already have a couple of books um, but it's really a it really depends on whether I have books arrive um, between now and then the only ones that I have that I'm still waiting for um, I made quite a few orders with Better World Books I think I have three orders from them um, so I I don't know when they'll arrive I don't know if they will arrive um, by the end of the month but if they don't then I'll just have a really small second half and it'll be fine so that's the haul thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys on Monday I will be doing the first half of my wrap up for me so I'll see you all then bye